back on top and back at home can Arsenal overcome visiting Aston Villa. Manchester City, hot on the leaders' heels, will seek to maintain the pace when Luton Town come to the Etihad. And a match that could have major continental implications as Newcastle host Tottenham Hotspur. in the top line in 2024. Arsenal striding back to the top of the Premier League. I was at the, the final game of last year at Fulham on New Year's Eve and it was dismal for Arsenal. They'd really ran out of steam. And credit to them for going away. I think Mikel Arteta has taken away on a bit of a training camp, some maybe some rest, some sunshine, just a, a bit of a fresh approach coming into the new year. And hasn't it worked? I mean, their, their performances and the energy, uh, results-wise, has been superb. They went through a phase of just banging in goals week in, week out. Their, their defensive record on every front since that point. It's just been a massive success and, and Arsenal are on a roll. They've got momentum, they've got rhythm, the belief is really high. Um, I think they're in a really good spot right now. You can look at the celebrations of Arsenal as they protect a precious clean sheet. They're just immense. Saliba and Gabriel, both of them. I mean, Arsenal's goal difference is incredible. Could be worth a point, could win him the Premier League title if it's that tight. Those two as a pair, just worked brilliantly. Saliba, a little bit more mobile, covers really well, can match players physically, gets really tight. And then you've got the physicality of Gabriel as well in terms of in the air. I love the way he stood up to Haaland when they played Manchester City the other day. I thought both of them defended that box brilliantly, got tight, got in the face of Haaland. And that for me shows real confidence, real belief that they're, they're top players. And they've certainly developed that as, as a partnership for Arsenal. I think Mikel Arteta has turned Arsenal into possibly the best out of possession team in the Premier League in terms of how they press, where they press, the intensity they go out, certainly in the start of the games. And Martin Odegaard has, has been a huge example of that. I think Arteta has really identified him and that position as something that with, without the ball can be as potent or if not more potent than when he has the ball. And he's led the line, he's, he's, he's gone early, he's led by example. Um, in terms of winning the ball back, certainly high up the pitch and really applied a lot of pressure to the opposition. And I think that's been a big key change in how Arteta has, has improved Arsenal this season. They are super excited about what we are doing, um, the way the team is performing, winning matches and, and they want more. We know the task, the challenge ahead of us and, and how good we have to be to win it. But we're going to try. There'll be frustration in the Villa ranks. They've dropped points at home here in their race to finish in the top four. They've had a little bit of a blip, but you'd expect that really. They've come a long way in a short space of time since Unai Emre took over. And he's put them into a team that is, you know, competing for top four. And you know, when you say that out loud and you look at the, the excitement and the goals and the football they've played this season, you know, it's, it's been a successful year no matter where they finish. Leon Bailey, John McGinn, 1-0 Villa! Aston Villa demand to be taken seriously. A lot's happened since that win for Aston Villa. And I think Arsenal were very unfortunate on the day. It was one of those matches where the ball was just never going to go in the back of the net. And it was quite a frustrating game for Arsenal and Mikel Arteta. So, 
I think that might give them a little bit of fuel, a little bit of understanding that they need to win this game. They can't afford to drop the points and I think it'll be a tough night for Villa. I think whenever you go back to your old club, whether it be a player or as a manager, there's a little bit something extra riding on the game. You know, a little bit of an opportunity to show how well you're doing now and, 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 and to you know, give a showcase of how good your team is. And that for me is what Unai Emery will be thinking. He'll be thinking that anyway, because that's his job and that's what he's done week in, week out with Aston Villa this season. But going back to your old club does always bring something a little bit different on the day. It's very difficult, very difficult, but then, of course, try to, to, to play the match thinking in our opportunities to get something, to get some point or, or, or even thinking we can, we can beat them. And uh, the three points for us is very important, like for them. And we are ready and we are, are well, very excited and motivated uh, how we are playing in, in Premier League, how we are uh, now fighting with Tottenham for the fourth position. A massive game for both teams. Villa looking for top four, if possible. Arsenal looking to win the Premier League. The pressure is on. I fully expect Arsenal to be all out, guns blazing. There's so much on the line. I think they're in such a moment, the mentality's there. They know how important and how difficult this match is gonna be. And, and I fully expect Arsenal to, to get the three points. The draw at Old Trafford that cost Liverpool the leadership of the Premier League was followed four days later by a seismic shock to the system. Taken apart at home by Atalanta in the first leg of their Europa League quarter-final. Jurgen Klopp's side can't afford to dwell on that 3-0 scoreline, their first defeat at Anfield for more than a year. If all goes to plan, Crystal Palace will suffer the backlash. Yes, we have to show reaction, definitely, 100%. That's clear. Even I have to think from time to time, and I will think about that. It's now not the first time in my life that I lost a football game, unfortunately. And um, yes, we will show reaction, I can promise. The optimism Palace felt in February when Oliver Glasner was drafted in to freshen up their future is being chipped away. A single win so far has left the London club five points above the relegation zone. Few expected an upset against Manchester City, but Palace are now in danger of losing three games in a row for the first time this season. Jean-Philippe Mateta's form offers hope. He's scored four goals in six games since Glasner's arrival. Will Chelsea entertain us with more late drama? The Blues have raised the standard of added time action, but not always to their advantage. The delight of the injury time winner against Manchester United overshadowed by disappointment as they conceded a late equaliser at bottom club Sheffield United. In the continuing quest for Europe, they need to stay strong to the end against Everton. I think it's, it's a still exciting because I think we have a semi-final and then uh, win games in Premier League to be, you know, um, in a good position or to finish in a very good position on the on the table. We have the possibility and see if we can, you know, uh, deliver the show. Sean Dyche's side have experienced delight and disappointment too. Victory over Burnley took Everton four points clear of the relegation zone. But less than 48 hours later, that cushion was halved due to another points deduction for breaches of the Premier League's profitability and sustainability rules. The Merseysiders won the reverse fixture. Now Deitch hopes his men will be fired up enough to end their 30-year winless run at Stamford Bridge. Level with Tottenham at half-time last week, Nottingham Forest can only reflect on what might have been. After losing in London, goal difference alone is keeping them above the drop zone. You know Espirito Santo needs his players to be lifted by their return to the city ground. Backed by a famously vociferous crowd, Forest have won more home games than any other club in the bottom seven. Wolves can expect a ferocious reception. It's a very difficult game. I hope the supporters will be full uh, behind us. And then I think it's possible to win, uh, of course, that game. Uh, we, saw it, we saw it against Fulham, uh, where the supporters were uh, 
were really good, uh, really behind the team, and uh, yeah, we, we gave them something back. So hopefully we can uh, we can do that uh, also against uh, Wolverhampton. Wolves European prospects are fading after one win in five. Blown away by West Ham's clever wind-assisted corner, then denied a last-ditch equaliser thanks to a hotly disputed offside decision that's landed manager Gary O'Neill in trouble with the FA. Better news, his top scorer Huang Hee Chan is back in contention for this trip across the Midlands. Brentford are seeking to end a nine-game winless run. They led last time out at Aston Villa only to draw, and that left them just four points above the relegation zone. All in all, it's a frustrating spell for the Bees, but their visitors this weekend have the league's worst away record. On the other hand, desperation could make Sheffield United hard to beat. It's going to be just as tough against Aston Villa as well. We're going to have to be on our, on our A game. You have, to, you have to play our A game as well. They will put us to the test. We're just going to do everything to, to make sure that we come on top as the winner. The Blades, who shared the points with Chelsea last week, have drawn three of their last four matches. They're cutting it fine if they're to mount a late charge for safety. Seven games to play and a lot of ground to make up. But there is hope. Sheffield United beat Brentford in December and haven't lost to the West London club in six meetings. Arsenal lead a top three that's covered by a single point, all a long way clear of fourth where Tottenham have edged out Aston Villa on goal difference. Everton's further two-point deduction for breaching the league's financial rules dropped them below Brentford under threat from Forrest and Luton. Still to come, Spurs' push for Champions League football takes them to Tyneside to face a Newcastle team with recent experience of tackling Europe's elite. There's a contrast for sure. Luton Town head to the Etihad seeking survival. Manchester City are defending their crown. But that contrast masks a connection. Both teams are desperate for the three points. City aim to make history by becoming the first club to win four consecutive league titles since the English top flight's inception in 1888. The team! that have simply been head and shoulders above the rest. Luton, competing for the first time in the Premier League, are driven by the desire to earn a second season in this competition. That would represent a major achievement. But at the Etihad, they face a team unbeaten in 26 matches in all competitions, proving themselves yet again on the continental stage in midweek by drawing with Real Madrid at the Bernabeu. Pep Guardiola's serial champions are in form. Premier League is so important and I expect a game more similar that uh, what happened in the Premier League when we won 2-1 at the end, than the FA Cup uh, and we have to be ready. So it's 11 months, 10 months fighting for the title. We know the position that we are, that we cannot drop points. It's not just their current air of invincibility that's daunting, it's their ability to hurt their opponents. City netted four goals in both their last two league matches and average more than two per game. Woodrow delivers. Morris! Carlton Morris with what may be an absolutely huge 90th minute winner for Luton. Still, tip your hat to the Hatters. Their victory over Bournemouth might have been a first win in 11 league outings, yet they're in the drop zone on goal difference alone. Crystal Palace in 14th have won just one more game than Luton. Nonetheless, their position remains perilous and the injury list doesn't help. We've lost probably at least one of the, the team that was fit last Saturday. Uh, we've got seven, fit, uh, seven centre-backs at this club None of the seven train this week. Um, so, yeah, we'll see where we stand for tomorrow. And obviously we've got no Issa Kabore because he's ineligible. So it's great. In December, Luton shocked the citizens at Kenilworth Road, leading at the break. But within three second half minutes, the revolution was complete. City won 2-1. We believe we've got a good plan. We know going into any game against Manchester City at their place, you've got to be able to defend well. Um, 
Yeah, we're going to need everyone to, to be a, a 9, 9.5, 10 out of 10 um, to get something from the game. 18th placed Luton will face nothing as tough as this in the rest of their run-in. Manchester City haven't lost to a side in the bottom three since a defeat at Norwich in 2019. And under Guardiola, they haven't been beaten at the Etihad by a team in the relegation zone. Rob Edwards won't write this off, it's not his style. But while Luton's failure to win might be shrugged off, the three points are paramount for Pep's men. Bournemouth aimed to regain the momentum that was building before Luton inflicted their first defeat in six. And only Iraola has been named manager of the month for March and his side could win four home games in a row in the Premier League for the first time. That would also give them an unprecedented league double over Manchester United, who they trounced 3-0 at Old Trafford in December. They battled us and we lost the battles. So, and tomorrow will not be different. That is the way they play. So they want to fight with you. You need to support each other to win the battles and to, to, over, to outplay them and to outrun them and in defending to match the runs. Harry Maguire remains United's only fit, experienced centre-back for the trip south, as he was in last week's draw with Liverpool. Eric Ten Hag's team held on to sixth, but the gap to the chasing pack has narrowed. They could finish the weekend as low as eighth if things turn sour again against the Cherries, which would do nothing to reduce the noise surrounding the manager's future. West Ham's hopes of qualifying for Europe for the fourth season in succession were reignited by a first league win in five last time out. There's work to do yet, and the Hammers may be drained after a 2-0 defeat at Leverkusen in the first leg of their Europa League quarter-final. That'll take some overturning, but first they have to find the reserves of strength to tackle Fulham. And there's far less stress for the cottagers, out of the running for silverware or Europe, and realistically safe from relegation. That said, after a three-game winless run, they're 13th, lower than they'd have wanted to be. And Fulham haven't ever picked up so much as a point at the London Stadium. We will have to, to start very strong and, and not make the same mistakes we did uh, the last few games, uh, especially the also, the, the last away games, we were not at our best. It's a great, great place to, to do it, great uh, stadium, you know, great atmosphere, so it would be good to do it there. They did it in the reverse fixture. The 5-0 victory was a real highlight. Memories of that might inspire them to take something from East London. Just when there appeared to be a ray of hope for Burnley, Everton darkened the mood. Vincent Company's side couldn't afford to be handing out gifts to their fellow relegation contenders. The Clarets' first defeat in five left them six points from safety with a damaging goal difference. But hope springs eternal. Every game is tough for us, but every game offers the opportunity. We, we don't also look at any game as a game where we can't win. That difference between what we've had this season and the next six games is, well, if you have a good performance, you have to, you have, to have three points. This looks a must-win game for Brighton and Hove Albion too if they're to mount a bid for a second season in Europe. They've had their ups and downs with extra matches and an extensive injury list taking their toll during an inconsistent campaign that's delivered some frustrating results for Roberto De Zerbi's side. None more so than December's reverse fixture at the Amex where Burnley drew one all despite mustering just six shots compared to Brighton's 29. That outcome ought to encourage company side, but the manager will be missing from the dugout, serving a touchline ban. Bentancur and Pedro Porro buries another one for Tottenham. The boys from the back are getting Tottenham back on track. Three points sealed with a kiss. Tottenham have moved back into the top four for the first time since February. Champions League qualification is now in their hands. And belief is growing for Ange Postacoglu's men. Eve, thank you so much for sitting down with me today, previewing the Newcastle game. But first of all, I just want to look back on that Nottingham Forest result. A, a big win. How do you reflect on those three points? Really happy because yeah, it was an important game for us to win. And then especially was playing at home as well. So yeah, it was, was good to win this game. 
and then yeah, start to, to, to stay focused on the, on the rest of the games. And obviously now you're in that fourth Champions League spot. How much of a boost is that for you with so few games to go that now it's in your hands? Yeah, I think uh, it's really excited. It's um, the games every player wants to play. We have uh, the opportunity to, 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 keep, uh, to keep that, so we know we're not going to let that go. That's why we're working hard every day here to be ready for, for, for that games, for the game like that. Yeah. I want to talk about Ange. I feel like we've spoken about Ange a lot this season, but he's such an intriguing character for us when we talk to him. As a player, what's he been like to play under? Because he's changed the style of football at this football club. I really enjoy playing with him. <laughs> yeah, I really enjoy him. You know, he's a, he's a manager who can, you know, he understands his players and he, everything he does, he's just trying to help you to be the best, you know. So yeah, the way we train, the way we play, I think everyone can see how his um, uh, magic is. You know, but yeah, we really enjoy playing with him, especially me. I really love it. I really enjoy him because that's my kind of football. You know, I was always dreaming playing football like that. And today I got Ange as a manager. I'm so happy. <laughs> Werner looks for Brennan Johnson, touches it for Son. Hyung Min Son right at the heart of all that is good about Tottenham. What was it like to play with someone like that? The, the brilliance um, of, of Son Heung-min in front of you. Well, right, I think Sonny is, uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's one of the guy like, I don't know, he, I think he has something, you know. He's not just on the, on the pitch outside football as well. When we got some things, you, call, you go, you can talk with him. He's a very open guy. And then, yeah, as a footballer, I don't have to talk about that because everyone knows. Does it on the pitch, does but it? as a man, yeah, as a man, he's, for me, he's, I think he's one of the best guys I meet in my life. He push everyone to, to the best. He's always supporting. He's always give you um, energy, you know, to work hard, to be, to be the best. Even you can lose one, two, three balls. Sonny gonna stay, stay behind you, stay, go again. The next time, you will be good, you know. It's the guy like that who is never give up, and he show he show that to you. Like if you try one, two, three, it doesn't matter. Try four, five, six, <laughs> one will pass. You know, yes. it's, it's, it's a guy like that. Like oh, you know, he never give up. You know, everything he do, he say like just um, do that with uh, with belief. You know, with belief and stay focused, stay strong. He will be. So for me, I think he's really good captain mm. because yeah he's a leader mm. you know how to manage the team as well so yeah we are happy to have him as a captain obviously you've got newcastle this weekend they obviously finished in the champions league last season they've struggled a little bit with this season but knowing them and having played against them it's still going to be a really really tough game isn't it I like uh, every game in prem <laughs> <laughs> i've heard that yeah. answer a million every game is difficult yeah every game is difficult in prem you know you just you know the things you have to do i mm. think you, you have to stay focused on you yeah work really hard during the week try to prepare the game during the week to be ready for the weekend you know that's what we're trying to do you know i respect newcastle because it's a good club it's a big club but we just focus on us try to work hard to go there ready to fight I think this is a totally different Tottenham team now. I think um, you know they played very well this year. Watched them a lot. I admire them tactically. I admire them physically. Um, I think they've done very well, and I think Ange deserves big uh, credit for how his philosophy has been implemented in the speed that it has, and just generally how they've played. And what about for the rest of the season? I know you say that you just want to focus on game by game, but surely now with the end in sight. That Champions League spot has to be Spurs. Yeah, why yeah. not? <laughs> why not? Why not? Why not? That's why we're walking here yeah. every day. You know, mm -hmm. everyone know like how, like I said, how, how Premier League is, especially games like that. You know, what's coming is really tough games. So yeah, we're just gonna work hard and be ready for for fight for for what what we have to. You know, because it's, I think for us, for fans, for for the club, it's really important to to qualify for, for, for the champions. So yeah, we don't gonna let, let that go. So yeah, we're gonna fight. Eves, thank you so much. Thank you. Good luck against Newcastle thank you. and for the rest of the season as thank well. You. Thank you very much. That match on Tyneside launches three days of Premier League action.
There are home fixtures for title contenders Manchester City, Liverpool and Arsenal over the weekend before Chelsea and Everton wrap things up on Monday, bringing to a close the second round of matches the Premier League has dedicated to its No Room for Racism campaign. Tackling discrimination and demonstrating how diversity across all areas of the game makes it stronger. The Premier League will be nothing without diversity. Greatness comes from everywhere, and there's no room for racism anywhere. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. And for even more Premier League content, from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock. And be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend on USA Network and on Peacock. We will see you there.